I would like to uh, present you uh, what HealthX Data Loft is all about. Uh, before I start, uh, let me explain a little bit what uh, International Data Spaces is. So my name is Julian Allenberger. I'm a senior project uh, coordinator at International Data Spaces Association. And we are actually a nonprofit organization that um, combines 150 member companies. And we all share this vision of making data sharing secure, uh, then also uh, getting uh, to the fact that uh, the data should be um, equal and an uh, equal partnerships should uh, data be shared. And this is actually uh, something that can be done via data spaces. So data spaces in effect are, as a reminder, a um, the sum of all data endpoints that are able to share data. And in a data space, the participants can trust each other because they all adhere to a common trust framework. And this common trust framework, in effect, is there to support uh, the trust by um, a specific, by the use of a data endpoint. And this data endpoint can be a IDS certified connector. So a connector, there are a couple of connectors on the market, for example, the Eclipse data space connector, and we at IDSA, we certify these components to make sure that these are trustworthy components that can be used for technical interoperability. And let me also give my congratulations to the speaker before, because uh, there was um, a good uh, sentence uh, being said that interoperability is not um, an end by itself, but we really need uh, the benefit of interoperability. So for example, when it comes to health data, and this uh, is of course the most sensitive data that we have, we want to make sure that if we are in another country, um, the doctors can see my track record as a patient and also see my medication that I get in my home country. So without further ado, let me uh, explain to you what HealthX Data Loft actually is. It's a German project uh, funded by um, the Ministry of Economic Affairs in Germany, and it supports the vision of a European health data space. So let me uh, quickly go to the next slide. So is is that they want to combine the primary and secondary healthcare market. So the primary second uh, the primary healthcare market actually is uh, dealing with hospitals, whereas the secondary healthcare market is dealing with all data from fitness data that you get from uh, wearing wearables um, to the fact um, that you can have a track record of your heart rate and can share this with your medical doctor. So when it comes to privacy and uh, also trust, it also comes to the people that are responsible for this project. And uh, we have a consortium of uh, really well-known enterprises and also public institutions. For example, um, the Charité, uh, so one of the most famous hospitals in Germany, but also the Bundesverdruckrei, so the Federal Printing Service. Um, they are focused on issuing um, uh, credentials so really uh, the fact that uh, they are not only printing our ID cards, but they will be in this data space responsible for verifiable credentials. Also Siemens Helsinius and Fraunhofer are part of this consortium. And this is uh, the fact that uh, we really want to get the public and the private sphere together to work on a common health data space. So as I said, they want to transform the primary and secondary health care sector and citizens should actually be the active participants in the health system. So this is the vision behind that. Uh, and they combine the use of data from different sources. So for example, MRT scan data, which is in the ICOM format. These are data sources that are of use in this project. And the other thing is uh, that we are not reinventing the wheel. We are building on health data ecosystems based on existing data platforms. So with Siemens Health in years, we want to include the TDHPC, a platform that already combines the work of different hospitals in Germany. And we use this via a connector to connect to the, the data space. 
So what we are also doing is using and merging existing solutions. So the EPA, that's the um, electronic patient file that's uh, now uh, invented in Germany and also in use. So we combine things that are already existent on the market. And also the aim of this project is that we want to have in the end database real world evidence research uh, so that uh, the research um, institutions don't need to have ex abstract data. They are using real based um, data from the patients if the patient gives the consent to share their data. And I will come to this in a moment. So again, the citizen is in the focus of everything and the data sources are clinical data, fitness and health data, but also the electronic health records. So the whole record um, of medication and um, the treatments that you got uh, from your doctor are all part of this. So um, we actually um, in this project developed four use cases that I will quickly go through because time is a little bit running. So I will just quickly go and get, uh, will provide you an overview of, about these use cases. The first one being self-determined everyday health. So this is individual prevention and healthcare. Second one is the clinical companion personalized uh, therapy uh, recommendations and interdisciplinary and cross-sectional care. We have personalized health services that are AI-based, individually uh, adopted uh, pharmaceutical care and secondary use of data. This is the data donation that I talked about before so that you share your data with a research institution. Um, but it all comes back to the, um, the, the concept of data sovereignty. So uh, when we are talking about um, a data space, we are also talking about data sovereignty. And this actually means that you as a data provider, as a citizen or patient in this regard, um, can attach specific terms and conditions to your data before handing it over to the data consumer. The data consumer can, of course, be, for example, a research institution. And these terms and conditions could be that you just limit the amount of data that you are sharing. You're just sharing the heart rate you're just sharing your MRT scan uh, that you got. Um, and you can also say that uh, the usage of this data is limited, for example, to three days or so. So there's also a time um, issue here dealing with when we are coming uh, to a data space. So this is also something uh, that is kept here in mind when it comes to a data space that data sovereignty can actually flourish. So coming to the first uh, use case, the self-determined data. Here the focus, for example, is uh, women's health as a high reach topic. And the method actually is that we have here a human centric design. You can see here this mock-up um, of the app that will be um, the link to the health um, data space. Uh, and they're using also interviews and, and workshops uh, to get the most out of it to produce this app. So um, actually uh, the concept here is to combine the manual symptom tracking and smart wearable data. As I said, you can definitely have EKG uh, data from your wearables. And um, this actually this, this use case uses a Fitbit app data, but it goes beyond that because you can use this Fitbit data to actually uh, get into contact with your um, medical doctor. And there you can um, de definitely showcase what kind of symptoms uh, you have, you receive, or you, you will sh showcase, um, depending on the time frame. Uh, for example, one month, you see that your, your heart rate has uh, some issues, then you can definitely share this, um, this report directly with your medical doctor. That's the first use case. Uh, the clinical companion in this regard um, is uh, the digital support for clinical post-treatment, pre-treatment, um, in this case, also for breast cancer patients. So one of the most common cancer forms in, for women. And this um, concept here actually is to make uh, the data transfer more transparent between the various stations of uh, the patient journey. So from the screening, from the breast cancer screening uh, to oncological practice and also clinic, as I said, also post-treatment, everything will then be yeah, visualized um, here in this patient journey. And along the way, there will be support, but also second opinions. So you will also can, or you can also share your data with different 
uh, medical doctors, but also uh, other hospitals, so that you can get more information and uh, a better decision making. Uh, one of the um, other uh, use cases that we have is, uh, for example, the personalized health services. So this is personalized drug therapy through joining uh, medication and pharmacogenetics data. So this is actually really an advanced testing of tolerability and uh, efficacy of medication by comparing genes with the medication. So the patient takes a more active role in the medication process. And this also is uh, um, a really good way to make medication more efficient in the future so that you can definitely also track if uh, the medication was right for you. Uh, if you, um, this is uh, maybe gender-based, uh, that there are more uh, side effects uh, coming up. So this is something uh, where we are also working on and also sharing this, this kind of really vital data uh, with the right people in the data space. And the last thing is actually the second talked about that before. So this is the provision of health data by citizens for specific studies. Um, I hope they should change the name of a study Tinder, but you can uh, in, uh, in the end browse through different studies and uh, then just yeah, go to the study that where you think, okay, your data is actually valuable uh, for the results of the study and you choose what kind of data you want to share. So this is a, a meta-analysis on the willingness of citizens to donate their data. We are also talking here not about secondary use of data, but data donation. Uh, so think, for example, you got a treatment, you have a broken leg, and there was a new treatment being done uh, in the operation, with, and you decide then if uh, this data can be used uh, for research purposes of, on other in other hospitals or so on. So really, what when it comes um, to self-determined data use, um, this use case is actually something uh, where we definitely um, want to promote um, the um, <coughs> benefits um, of um, health X data loft. And self-determined data is really released by the citizens. What's uh, also here uh, very um, important is that um, this data is definitely uh, depersonalized. So you just uh, you give your consent to share the data, but the data will be anonymized. I hope uh, <laughs> I could um, give you a short impression of this project, and uh, I'm open for for questions, and uh, will gladly hand over to my colleague Olga, who will. Uh, explain to you uh, what IDSA is doing in European projects. Actually, we are more focused in international and European projects than in uh, German projects. Um, but uh, this project is an exception because uh, we think that the ideas behind this project are really, um, really innovative and uh, we want to uh, keep track on that. So one last information about that. Uh, next week, there will be the founding of the European Health Data Alliance. This is uh, coming out of this project, and they combine different um, health data-related German projects into one association. And in the end, uh, this association will also be the umbrella uh, for operating models. So all the things that uh, you just saw in my presentation uh, will be industry-grade um, products in the end. So this is something uh, where they needed some kind of orchestration right now. And so um, the founding will take place next week.